If you're running demand gen campaigns in Google Ads, you're probably testing it completely wrong and it could be killing your results. You might have set up what you think is a good campaign structure to test demand gen, but the way Google actually delivers ads means your results are flawed and you can't actually know what's working properly. But don't worry, there's a smarter way to test, a way that gives you clean data, no audience overlap and much more reliable results. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it step by step with a screen share walkthrough and then some pro demand gen testing strategies. If you're new here, I'm Daryl Manda. I've been running a Google Ads agency for over a decade now. My agency Big Flare has helped over 100 brands to scale and generated more than $150 million in revenue using Google Ads for our clients. All right, let's jump into the screen share and I'll show you how to test demand gen the right way. All right, guys, we are here inside a Google Ads account and the feature you are looking for is over here on the left hand sidebar, come into your campaigns and come down to experiments. This is how you want to actually be testing your demand gen campaigns and testing different changes within those campaigns. From here, come over to demand gen experiments and click the plus box to create a new experiment. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is select a metric for the experiment. Uh, this is your success metric, the main metric that you're going to use to determine which arm of the experiment was a success. Uh, and I recommend going with cost per conversion and don't worry, after you've set up the experiment, you will be able to see all the other metrics like ROAS, conversions, cost. So this is just the metric that Google will be tracking as your success metric. But if you want to use something like ROAS or conversion value as your success metric, you can still do that and you do it manually when you go on the experiments dashboard later on, which I will also show you. Now you want to create your experiment arms. And I mostly recommend doing this for testing different creative, especially video creative within your demand gen campaign. It's just much better to do it this way than the typical way of like lumping multiple creatives in the same campaign or ad group. So I am gonna set up a experiment where I'm gonna test multiple different videos. And I'm gonna say, okay, arm name of this arm will be video one. And then you select your campaigns and you do need to set up your campaigns accordingly beforehand. So I have set up a demand gen campaign that just has video one in there. Let's make that the first arm of the experiment. I'll get a warning here saying that the campaign is paused. That's fine. That's just reminding me that I need to uh, activate that campaign before I launch the experiment. That's fine. You want to make sure your campaigns are all set up before you come in here and set up your experiment. And let's put here video two, because I'm going to be testing these different videos as this experiment. And I'll type here video two. There we go. And what you can also do, right, you don't just have to test only two videos or two different things. You can test multiple things. So like I actually want to maybe test four different videos, right? Just testing two different videos, a bit limiting. When we run demand gen, we might typically test three, four, five videos at a time. Uh, so let's go video three and then select my pre-made campaign, which was set up to test video three. And what you can also see there is that I just name the campaign similar to the testing arm. So this testing arm is for video three, this campaign is for video three. These campaigns are all the same uh, and the only difference between them is the video creative inside them. You need to make sure that everything else in the campaign is the same, you're targeting your bid strategies, and then just vary one thing, which in this case is gonna be the video creative, which I think is the best type of test to run for your demand gen campaigns. Uh, and then let's make a fourth arm, video four, select campaign, my video four campaign. Let's add this. So make sure your campaigns are already set up before you come in. Uh, create your arms, match the name to the campaign name, and then you can choose your traffic split. So you can see here, I've set up four arms for testing four different videos. It's automatically gone for a 25% traffic split. It will default to just doing an even split, and I do recommend doing that, an even split in most cases. You do have the option to do a custom split though. So if you wanted to do, I don't know, like 60 and then 10 here, like you can completely customize this 
but normally better to just do an even split, uh, which is what I do in most cases. Set an experiment date. Now, normally when I do this, I would just be running the experiment right now. So I just put today's date and then save and then activate my campaigns. In this case, I'm just gonna put the experiment off in the future because I'm just doing this as an example to show you guys. Uh, I would also set a longer date range, uh, let it run for maybe 60 or 90 days. And don't worry, like, you can actually end the test early if you want to like you can set it to run 60 or 90 days and then if your cpa is clearly better in one campaign versus the other one like you're getting statistically significant results on the cpa and it's less than 60 days your time frame you can test that end the test early if you want to so you don't have to run for the full time frame you put here so i recommend putting a longer time frame to give yourself enough time to collect data on the test Name your test something uh, descriptive so you don't forget what it is later on. So I'm just going to say this is the video creative test one. And you can also describe what you're testing down here if you want to. I don't normally do that. I'll just put in a test and then click save. Uh, and I'm going to cancel that because uh, I'll just show you one I made earlier. After you've saved it, you will see the test coming up in here. You'll see your start date and your end date over here. And clicking in will get you the results dashboard for the test. This is where you're going to start collecting data on the CPA, the CPM, the CPV, the conversions. You're going to get all this lovely data and you're going to start seeing whether the changes between your different testing arms or campaigns are statistically significant. Super useful stuff. All right, now let's talk about why this is better than what most people are doing. When you try and test your creative manually in demand gen without using the experiments feature, you create what's called audience overlap. That means that the same user might see both versions, which totally muddies up your results. If you're trying to test demand gen creative by having multiple ads in the same campaign, you also have the issue of not being able to set an even budget distribution between your creatives. Google tends to pick a winner way too fast and under test the other creatives. You can counteract this by having one creative per campaign, but again, without the experiments tool, you will suffer from the issue of audience overlap. The same person can be seeing multiple videos muddying up your test results. With the demand gen experiments feature, you split your audience cleanly. Group A sees version A, group B sees version B, and you have full control of the budget allocation. That means much more reliable data. You're no longer guessing which ad or which experiment arm is actually working. And there's another bonus when you use this method. You also get access to a proper experiments results dashboard. This dashboard will tell you when your test has reached statistical significance, which you'll be able to see down here on the bottom row. That's really useful because it tells you when your results are likely to be trustworthy and not just due to random fluctuations or luck. And in the main table over here and in the summary metrics right up here at the top, you'll be able to see a comparison of the metrics that really matter, like your cost per acquisition, your ROAS, your conversions, your cost, and more. And when you can see your test results like this, showing the changes in key metrics and whether or not those differences are actually statistically significant, this is when you can start making much, much smarter decisions about what's working and not working in your demand gen campaigns. Now, by the way, if you want a team to run this kind of testing for you so you can skip the setup and just get better results, it's exactly what we do at my Google Ads agency, Bigflare. At Bigflare, we specialize in scaling six to eight figure brands using Google Ads. We've managed over $10 million in annual ad spend and helped generate over $150 million in sales for our clients. If you need a super experienced team to manage your Google Ads for you and take your revenue to new heights, then click the link in the description below this video. You'll be able to book in a time to talk with me directly and we'll see if my team and I can help you scale with Google Ads. All right, let's get back to my demand gen testing strategies. So what should you actually be testing when using demand gen experiments? In my experience, this works best for testing different creatives. Things like different videos, alternate hooks, or different creative angles or themes. I do especially like using the experiments feature to test different creative themes. For example, you could test whether raw, authentic UGC style videos work better for you, or if it's better to go with more polished, professional product focused content. But do make sure you only test one thing at a time. That's key. If you change too many things, you won't know what made the difference. For example, if you're already testing different video creatives, 
Do not also try and test a different bid strategy at the same time. If you do that, you'll be left scratching your head not knowing which change actually delivered the performance change later down the line. Also, don't stop the test too early. Set a longer date range on the experiment of 30 days or ideally more. Let the test run and get a good amount of data and ideally hit statistical significance before making any judgment calls. And remember to focus on the conversion-based metrics. Just looking at impressions or click-through rate does not give you a good picture of actual performance. You really want to be looking at conversions and cost per conversion, and also revenue and return on ad spend if you're running an e-commerce campaign. Creating proper split tests in demand gen is just one piece of the puzzle though. And in this video up here, I go through a more comprehensive strategy for setting up demand gen the right way. I also dive into more of my pro strategies for ensuring you get the best possible results from this powerful campaign type. So check out this video up here if that sounds interesting and I'll see you on the next one.